Elita, Battle Angel, out in theaters now. As a manga and anime nerd, wow, this movie spoke to me. I loved every bit of it. It had the cool anime moments that they tried to pull into a live action, which was really, really cool to see. And to be honest, this is the first anime movie uh, adaption to live action that I've seen that is actually pretty good and pretty watchable. I mean, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist had a good try, but it was still not Full Metal Alchemist. And Death Note, I wish someone wrote that in the Death Note, you know? <laughs> uh, so basically, Elite Battle Angel, it was pretty good. Yes, there were some loose ends here and there because there's a lot of stuff you're like, um, where does that come from? Or it's like, is there backstory to this? Are we gonna know more? And I know a lot of people were freaking out about the whole, she has so big eyes, but you know, it, it actually worked because the CGI was some of the best CGI I've ever seen. It is from the guys that did Avatar, so it, it's, it was pretty good. So, I mean, with the whole creation of the world even alone, Iron City itself, when you looked at it, it looked like a city, but they weren't really filming at a city. There was a set up studio. It looked like a full city. Zalem looked awesome. I wanted to go to Zalem. Uh, so just like everyone else in Iron City, they wanted to go to Zalem. So the scenery looks amazing. There was the Badlands as well that looked pretty much just like a forest. So there wasn't really much done there, but it looked, it looked pretty decent. Uh, running around in the city, seeing the characters actually walk in the city and what I read, some of these areas were full CGI. So I couldn't even tell the difference. It looked real. Like it looked like an actual place you can go and look around and walk around in. So Elita, the main protagonist. What I really liked about this is normally in films they have a way of taking a character and then making you see the world for the first time through their eyes. And I feel like they did that so well with Elita because when she, the moment she wakes up, she doesn't remember anything. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't even know her name. And through her, you experience this entire world because she literally goes out and tries things. She literally tries to see what's going on. Where's this? What's this? How does this taste? And all that kind of stuff. And you are experiencing it with her, which is kind of a very cool gateway to opening up into a world that we do not know or understand. She's a pure badass. Her fighting moves, the Panzerkunz, wow. That is some crazy, crazy fighting style. So Panzerkunz translates to armor art. So basically it is cyborg martial arts. We went into it blind. Like we didn't read manga or see an anime or anything about it. We didn't know about Elita Battle Angel. Like most of you don't. No one knows it is, it is a manga. I mean, Yokito Kishiro has created like, I think three or four different manga variations of Elita itself. And no one's really heard of it except the hardcore fans that found it. Uh, so we went in blind and it's not expecting much. So the story, the main character and Dr. Ido, so Elisa and Dr. Ido, they were pretty cool. Their chemistry was like, that was, that was father and daughter. So, and what I understand to the manga, that's basically what happens. Like they do have this father daughter chemistry building. So I think they did a really great job there. But then you get Yugo, which is meant to be her love interest. And it kind of felt more like, it felt like brother and sister in, a, in like a sense, like far brother and sister, but it kind of felt like these two weren't meant to be like, oh, I love you, oh, I love you, oh, I love you, you know, like it, it, it didn't feel right. It felt a bit strange. Some of these char the characters though, some of them were these stars you've seen before in like a lot of films where you're like, oh, I know that person, oh, I know that person. And then the characters they were playing or portraying were... Like, they were good characters, but I felt like it was, like, not needed for those guys to play those. Because they were so, I don't know, you were expecting, like, oh, this is going to be some big lines, some big roles. And then they weren't utilized properly. So, still good, though. Their characters weren't badly written. It's just they could have done better of taking lesser. I don't know how to put this. Like, 
less known actors, I guess. The one thing this movie really did have that you took away was it had that whole rich and poor theme going on. So with Zalem being the city in the sky, it looks beautiful. We're sending resources to them. And then we're living in Iron City, which is technically the slums. It didn't look very slummy, but it was the slums. Uh, it, it was basically the power struggle. Uh, much like you could, when you watch it, you may, might think of Elysium. So much like that. Each location in this film that they shot was different from one another. It felt so different and lively. You got to see Iron City to its fullest potential in this world. Well, not fullest potential. I mean, we got to see a bar scene. We got to see a scene in the factory. We got to see a scene up in the sky. No spoilers. Up in the sky. And then we got to see and just in the Badlands. And then the next moment they're in this other place that I do not know. And it's just, it's just crazy to see how many different spots they were able to use and form and create. One of the things we did take away that was a bit bothersome about the movie, don't get me wrong, it was, the story was good and the growth was good and you could see, you couldn't really see where it's going, but you could kind of like have a feel of which direction it's going. There was one thing that really bothered us when we walked away at the end of the day. The villain, he felt far away, literally and figuratively. So it was kind of like, oh, she has to get to Zalem to fight this villain, but then through the entire movie, you see him like twice and he, he didn't, wasn't really like there. He didn't feel, oh, I know this villain now. It was more of a, he's at the behind of the scenes, puppet mastering all the bad guys basically. So it was kind of, he fell far away. So it didn't make sense that she got to a goal. Motorball. What a sport. Like I would watch that. It's kind of like, NASCAR meets Speed Racer mixed with roller derby and robots and oil and gears and it's it's cool. It's just it's cool. So basically the robots uh, or cyborgs more sorry it's not robots more cyborgs uh, climb in suits or get attachments and then they go out on this track that has like crazy turns and flips and tunnels and all that kind of stuff and ramps and to go out there and to grab a ball and try to like survive with the ball, the last one standing basically wins. There's not even a finish line. They didn't even add a finish line to it. It's literally just them racing around and fighting each other. Who doesn't like that? It's the sport of the future, I'm telling you now. Basically going away from this movie as well at the end of the day, there was a lot of stuff we really liked, like the hunter heroes, they were really cool. And then there was some stuff we didn't like, like the love scene and all that, but overall, you could actually see how passionate the creators were. So with James Cameron writing the script and like in 20 years, he's been wanting this to happen. And he finally gives it to Robert Rodriguez to go and do. And it comes out good. It really is the start of a trilogy. So in my hopes it really does continue because I can see they really, really enjoyed making this movie. And they really put in time and effort to make sure they capture Yokito Kashiro's mind and his way that he wanted the world to be seen. I also read that they literally took the script to him and read it to him and he loved it. It was exactly how the world was captured as he wanted it to be. So I honestly hope they can continue with making this movie. Great film. Very good annotation. Very fun to watch. Easy two and a half hours of my life. It was worth it. I suggest you go watch this movie. It's a really great movie. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like and that bell for notifications so you can see when we have uploaded. Catch you guys next time.